give Jesus the biggest clap offering of the year. Celebrate him and magnify him. Now, let us lift up our two hands to heaven. And in your own words, give him thanks for taking you through the year 2017. Give him thanks for his grace that is all over your life. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. We we'll do thank him for good health. Thank him for the job on your hand. Thank you for his blessings over your life, your family. We we'll do thank him for keeping you in the faith up till now. Come on, give him glory. Give him praise. Give him praise, give him glory. We do thank him for his blessings on your life. The grace to keep serving him. We do celebrate him. In Jesus precious name we have given thanks except the Lord watches over the city the watchmen are away but in vain we are all beneficiaries of his grace by his grace we are who we are and we are where we are today without him we will not be here his grace has kept us. We slept and I walked 365 days of the year because he sustained us. We owe every good thing in our life to him. We owe every good thing in our life to him. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Every good and perfect issues around our life have come from him. They have all come from him. We owe it to him. We owe it to him. We owe it to him. Now you are looking for a job. Somebody is looking, the only thing somebody is looking for is health. To be healed. You are able to apply, attend interviews, give him thanks. The job will soon drop. You are waiting for promotion. Somebody that graduated at the same time which you have never gotten a job till now. Give him thanks for the job. Then the promotion will come. If you don't know how to walk with God, you get frustrated. It's important to know how to walk with God. He never lies. He never does evil. He said, far be that the Almighty will do wickedness. It's made for a man to say, if I've done any quit, I'll do it no more. And that which I know not, teach thou me. God is never at fault. I said, my God is never at fault. <laughs> Say it loud, my God is never at fault. <laughs> With that bit of understanding, forget not all these benefits. One more time, go before the Lord and express your gratitude on everything that comes to mind now. Thank him that you are not in the mortuary, you are in the sanctuary. Thank him. That you are still on your two feet today. Thank him. 
that his grace is all over your life and your family. Give him glory. Give him praise. Celebrate him. Magnify him. Now, ask him to speak to you this morning. Speak to me, Jesus, this morning. Open up a new chapter to my life by your word today. Now, ask him to speak to you. Ask him now, he's always there. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. When the word of Joseph came, he turned his life around 360 degrees. As God's word goes forth, your own word comes down. Today. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated. My case is different. Because I'm redeemed of the Lord and as a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. Congratulations. We've been trying to look at this subject since the month began in our Sunday services overcoming forces that stand against fulfillment of prophecies. This is a highly prophetic family, and it's important we get acquainted with the protocols for experiencing fulfillment of prophecies and take off the foxes that spoil the validity of prophetic wars in our lives. How did I call this a highly prophetic family? Everything we're walking into today was spoken of yesterday. In clear terms, no mincing words. You are sitting on the prophetic roof right now. It was spoken 17 years before it came to be. You have a lot of publications all through the year that was circulated here, all the prayer manuals and all that. It was spoken of April 10, 1982, that there shall be a press that will operate at an industrial scale and will go as far as printing Bibles, and now it's there. <laughs> Prophetic word. Tonight we'll be speaking to the entire world at the crossover night, and then we expect maybe 174 nations to hook on tonight, maybe 175, maybe 176, but that was spoken April 10, 1982 that you'll be speaking at one spot and it shall be watched on the screen across the nations of the world. There was no internet technology then, at least not in the commercial domain. You are seated in a highly prophetic platform, so you need to know how to see prophetic words come to pass. Everything is uh, coming one after the other. The recent NUC maiden ranking of universities has our two universities in the first 10 in Nigeria. Amen. 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 It's amazing. Landmark University of yesterday. Prophetic wars are sworn verdicts. All we need to know is to learn how to work in the realm of fulfillment of prophecies. And that's what we've been trying to do. So, to see prophecy fulfilled, you must be aware of certain things that will hinder them from being fulfilled. 
And that's all we've been trying to go through. Today we look at three of them as we round up. Number one, beware of murmuring. You are not qualified to see fulfillment of prophecies with murmuring. Beware of murmuring. What or why must we not murmur? Murmuring in chaos, God's anger. And it takes the hand of God to see prophecies fulfilled. When you incur the anger of your helper, you are no longer a candidate for his helps. That means no one sees prophecies fulfilled with murmuring. Those who murmured in the wilderness were destroyed. They never saw the promised land, sir. That was a prophetic word. It was taking them to a land flowing with milk and honey, but they got destroyed on the way because they murmured against their helper. So he withdrew his help and they became vulnerable and became destroyed. Beware of murmuring. They complained against God. Numbers 11, 1, and he was displeased. And the fire, his anger was kindled by their complaint. And the fire that the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Beware of murmuring. The way of complaining. More morning messes up the destiny of believers. Complainings complicate the matters of the saints. Beware. More morning. In Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse. 15 to 17. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. What has the Lord spoken? Give glory to the Lord before he causes darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And when ye look for light, behold, it turns to the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. But if you will not hear, my soul will weep bitterly in secret places for your pride, for your pride, for your pride. But what is all about? Look, life is better for me without you. What are you worth to me after all? You have been deceiving me all this time. What you said will happen three years ago, did it happen? Why you said last year I tried to believe you, but it didn't happen. And so, what am I to hear from you? It's all about pride. I pray for deliverance for every captive of pride today. Remember, pride goes before destruction. Among other things, what has kept me going is that God is never to blame. God is never to blame concerning my situation. No. Let no man say when he suffers, I'm suffering from the hand of God. But every man suffers when he's drawn of his own lust. And when lust is conceived, he for sin. 
I was saying, Prince, what then? Everybody is absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. Far be that the Almighty will do wickedness. God is never to blame is the driving principle of my life. So I have no complaints against God. Watch every memorial. They hardly have testimonies because the scriptures cannot be broken. Watch every memorial. They hardly record testimonies. The more you complain against God, against his word, against his prophet, the more complicated your matter becomes. Memorials are not candidates for fulfillment of prophecies. And because nature abhors vacuum, you are either celebrating God or mourning against God. So make your choice. He said, rejoice in the Lord, not rejoice in things. Rejoice in the Lord always and again. I say rejoice. When you stop rejoicing, you start mourning. <laughs> when you stop rejoicing, you simply start mourning. I have remained eternally uncomfortable with murmurers. And I say, I say everything, well, 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 you see, you see, you see. I say, okay, you go, you go, you go. Ebe <laughs> It's so important for you to bridle your life against memory. The memory of last year place you where you found yourself last year. The memory of this year is what place you where you are now. Praise God. If you will rejoice always, there will be no time to murmur. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say what? Rejoice. Rejoicing is a spiritual cure for memory. Eba mi be Jesu ga o aleluya. Eba mi be Jesu ga o aleluya. O lori o gun orun o. Aleluya. Just celebrating God away all the time. Praise God. All the time is the covenant cure for memory. Number two. Beware of depression. Depression. Why hast thou cast down, O my soul? Psalm 42, verse 5. And why hast thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his covenant. Continence. Now, when your head is cast down, your help is withdrawn. You better get up, my soul. <laughs> you want to assess the hell from above. Get off, my soul. It won't reach you without a bright countenance. <laughs> get up. 
He repeated that again in the same chapter, verse 11. Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou, you know, disquieted within me? Hope thy in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? Get up and celebrate. Get up and rejoice. You know, in the days of, I mean, those days when the devil came on an attack on my wife's health, nobody had the opportunity to say sorry to me. Brighter by the day. Hello, how are you today? Great. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, I did no member of the family, no mentor had an opportunity to say sorry. I will rejoice and be glad in him. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. This is the day. I have kept a countenance that secures me the hell from heaven all my life. This man, you can't depress me. <laughs> you see, I'm a fool, it's an expression. And you have a right to it, to your opinion, given you by God. Jesus wanted to pass through a place. He said, you can't pass through here. He said, okay, I'll go through another way. <laughs> Everybody has his God-given right to express his feelings and his views on any issue. You'll be surprised. I've never read anything against me in my life. You are the one reading and getting bothered. I've never read one. Since you are talking about me and I'm me, I know myself more than you. <laughs> <laughs> what am I listening to you for? <laughs> if you wrote against me today and I see you tomorrow, say I didn't know. I just embrace you and then you are under conviction. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Stop depressing yourself. Now there are those who are depressed by the devil, there are those who depress themselves. They just sit down. Look at this room. My God, this carpet is overdue for change. <laughs> change it. <laughs> Amen. Be aware of depression. Why? First, it robs you of God's presence. In His presence, there must be fullness of joy. Um, fullness of joy. And on his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. You can't have his presence without fullness of joy. Not just joy. Fullness of unreserved joy. Unfeigned joy. Unmechanical joy. Real joy. And without his presence, your access and my access to the promised land is not in view. Israel went out of Egypt. There was a barrier of the Red Sea. God was in the midst of them. The sea saw them and it fled. The barriers on your path to fulfillment of prophecy will clear up with his presence. And you can't have his presence without having joy. Psalm 114 and verse 1 to 3. It takes joy to secure his presence. It takes his presence to clear the barriers on the path to fulfillment of prophecy. It takes his presence to clear the barrier on the path to fulfillment of prophecies. Why must I be aware of depression? It takes joy to assess the world in season. You shall have a song as in the night when the holy solemn is kept out with gladness of heart as when one went with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. And what will happen? And the Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard. Now, wait a minute. At every crossroad, a word from the Lord is the only guaranteed way out. At every crossroad, at every crossroad, a word from the Lord is a guaranteed way out. When our last daughter's head was attacked by the enemy, they carried my daughter from the prophet's chamber to the hospital, half dead. Now the prophet went to walk, 
and led the people in praise and celebration and went down to his office, locked the door, sat on the chair, and with a smile, Jesus, there must be a way out. Not with complaints. Oh God, you know I'm a prophet? He didn't know. <laughs> you, are now, you are the one informing him. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, there must be a way out. And he shot four bullets of scriptures at me. What? I called my son of Jeremy, I said, Go and read the scriptures on that body. And read the scriptures, he said, the place caught fire Hallelujah. and life restored. Yeah. Pastor Kuala, my son, said all the, all the system has broken down. He said, doctor, all the system has broken down. But life came forth with a word from the Lord. You see, complain won't change your story. Beware of depression. God is not behind your trouble. It's your way out of that trouble. <laughs> God is not the one afflicting you. He's the one that is committed to set you free. So if you are going to complain about anything, which you should do not, don't complain about God. Don't complain against his word. You see, if you want anything, find out those who got it and then follow them. I wanted with all my heart the faith at work in again. I got it. I wanted with all my heart the grace of kingdom prosperity in Copeland. I got it. I wanted the longevity grace on Pastor Della. I got it. I got it. He wrote me a letter. He said, the Lord spoke to me that he has granted you long life among the few chosen ones in this nation. Life. You say, want it and get it. Many are not just serious. They are not just serious about anything. You can't be a lawyer by wishing in your room. No. You walk out and go to law school. Get a first degree in law and then go to law school and then if you succeed, good luck. You don't succeed, you go back to the farm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's just simple. There is no... If wishes were horses, all the beggars will ride. Wake up. Stop depressing yourself. Stop depressing yourself. Stop depressing yourself. It takes joy to assess a word in season. It takes a word in season to come out of your predicament. Challenge your soul every time that is summons. Why is thou cast down on my soul? You want to get help from God? Brighten up. Brighten up. God can't reach you with your long, frowning faces. Brighten up. Brighten up. Many will see the hand of God today. Yeah. And then, of course, number three, as we round up. Beware of thanklessness. Beware of ingratitude. It always grants its victims. <laughs> Beware of ingratitude. Don't stop thanking God or you stop saying prophecies fulfilled. Don't stop thanking God or you stop saying prophecies fulfilled. Beware of the siege of ingratitude the siege of thanklessness. Beware. Jesus stood at the grave of Lazarus. Now listen. In John 5, 25, behold the hour coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, and they that hear shall live. It's a prophetic about it. Then in John 11, 39, they said, look, this one is not just dead, but now he's thinking. He's been there four days. Jesus said, did I not say to you that if you believe, you see the glory of God? Take away the stones. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, Father, 
I thank thee that thou hast had me. And the man is thinking, people are closing their noses. We say, he has had you. Had you how? He gave thanks to invoke fulfillment of that prophecy. Don't ask God for anything today. He won't hear you. Give him thanks. Amen. You have prayed for 364 days. Don't pray again. <laughs> Give him. <laughs> Jesus heard when Lazarus was dead. And he told his disciples. And he stayed there two days more. And they had two days journey to get there. And he has said, oh, Lazarus, come forth. No sound, no voice. Okay, I'm coming forth myself. <laughs> and Father, I thank thee, Lazarus, come out here. This God hears me always. And I know you have heard me. Lazarus, come forth. Now, thank God that he has heard you on all prayers you pray since the year began. Amen. Don't ask him for anything. No? Amen. I thank you for my miracle children. I thank you. I'm a mama, baby mama now. I thank you for my miracle marriage. I'm now missing somebody. I thank you for my career breakthrough. I'm not begging. I'm not going down. I've been breaking for. I thank you, Jesus, for thou hast heard me, and I know that you hear me always. That's the way up. Thank you, Jesus. Don't ask God for anything today. Else. You don't try. Now, thank him with seriousness. Thank him what? Not scornful thanksgiving. Uh, they say we should thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But you also know that this is not, I should have, it's not that they said it today. I, mean, I wanted to complain to you based on facts. <laughs> Amen. Now, my wife and I have been going on for 41 years now uh, that we knew and got into a relationship and got married subsequently after that. I've not had one complaint to her till now. God delivered me from complaints longest time because I need complicate matters. Rejoice in the Lord always. When they are troubled, I say relax. It's nothing there. Jesus is here. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. In the midst of accident, relax. In the midst of attack of the enemy, relax. Amen. He was gasping for breath one day, and I was going for all night. And I just, they said, it's gasping. It's not gasping. It's breathing. <laughs> so I breathed into him and went away. No prayer point. I just went away. Praise God. They say, as soon as I turn back, there's nothing to worry about. Just trust your life in the hand of Jesus. Hallelujah. All this jumping up and down won't change your story. Settle in with Jesus. And it will settle the issues of your life. That's all it takes if you must enjoy your work in the prophetic. Remain addicted to thanksgiving as a lifestyle. Father, I thank you. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I thank you. Every day, in everything, and for everything. And for what? Everything. everything. When we are building this place, we lost three trusses. Each of the trusses is a building. And I say, I hope nobody's hurt. I say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Clear the thing off. Nobody must say sorry to anybody. So all the weathers came. Broke them to pieces. Gathered them to... The other side. You say, how much was it? It's not necessary. The one building is not complaining. So what? You say, how much did it cost? You 
You say, how much was it? It's not necessary. The one building is not complaining. The what? You say, how much did it cost? I didn't find out. Don't depress yourself. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. You know what depression does as I close? It robs you of access to God's next plan. Because every plan of God requires joy to assess. It robs you of access to God's next plan for your life. Blessed are they that hear the joyful sound. Psalm 89 verse 15 They shall be still he said, They shall walk O Lord in the light Of thy countenance You can't assess the joyful Son without a joyful heart You need A joyful heart to assess The joyful son That conveys God's plan To you Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the ways of salvation. It takes joy to draw and to assess God's next plan for your life. I decree the destruction of every siege of depression on anyone's life today. And it is destroyed forever. Remember? Nature abhors vacuum. To give thanks to God always, you must keep his benefits at heart. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that you tell me, bless holy name, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Keep his benefits at heart. To be free from depression. Keep rejoicing in the Lord, not in things around you. To be free from mourning, remain grateful to God for where you are. Then you are committed to take you to where next you should be. If you don't replace these foxes, they will come back. Remember that man who was set free from that demonic hole and the demons after they had gone out came back again to check the place whether it was still vacant and went back and took seven more wicked spirits because it was empty. It was empty. You remove the foxes, you must replace them. You don't replace them with the right foxes. The evil foxes will come back. Sons of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15. Take away the foxes. The little, little foxes. Because they spoil the vine. Because our vines have tender grapes. The things that corrupt prophetic word in your life, you remove them. And you replace them with the covenant forces. Not foxes. Forces. That would disallow them to come back. Until you become grateful, you remain a victim of memory. Until you become an addict of rejoicing in the Lord, you'll be depressed. Time and again. And when you stop thanking God, you stop seeing prophecies fulfilled. You need to be acquainted with this because you are in a prophetic family. You must know how things work here. There is nothing magical. It's just simple engagement of the truth. Remain grateful. Keep rejoicing in the Lord. 
although the fish may not blossom, <laughs> but the way to it is to rejoice in the Lord your God. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Let the joy of salvation overrun your life so as to commit the hand of God to change your story. <coughs> That's the way it works. The first time my wife came to, our, to the church in Kaduna, we were 21 that Sunday, it was a huge attendance. She could never marry the kind of joy I returned with, with the number she met. Oh yes, that somebody got saved. I'm intoxicated. There are two people got saved at the same time. Praise God forever. Now today I'll go out on a Saturday and get back home with a thousand souls. Then one, and then two, and then three. There was no day nobody got saved. You can't kill my joy. You can't kill. And I saw the word of God coming for. Man, God was present. She came 121, she thought we were doing Sunday school, we are closing Sunday. <laughs> now see where we are today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until you stop murmuring about that, your business, it won't change level. Until you stop complaining about that business, it won't change the level. You can't pick offense in your helper and see yourself expect to be helped. You can't be, he said, beware of offenses. It's simple that offenses will come. But warn to them by whom it come. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Beware of offenses. Beware of offenses. Beware of offenses. For blessed are they who are not offended in me. Matthew eleven six. Beware of behind my money, behind depression is offenses. Offenses against God, offense against man. They are just down, going nowhere. Praise God. Hallelujah. A ministry was on an all out attack against our ministry here for seven years. How many years? My wife and I never sat down once to discuss it. Stop depressing yourself. He has right to his opinions. No. My wife said to me one day, I heard that somebody talking, say something on the TV. I said, should somebody appear on the TV and not say something? <laughs> he said that he's speaking against us. I said, they don't understand them. Not speaking against us. They don't understand them. And that ended, my wife understands it, that, that ended, the only time to special. I said, he's not speaking against us. Maybe they don't understand them. Amen. <laughs> He tore our, your book. No, he said. He just had a book. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first day I saw this young man, I heard him and pat him on the back. Hello, long time. From within me, no premonition. You better stop depressing your life. Amen. He said to me one day, if this nation has two of you, sir, be something else. Yes. I said, thank God. <laughs> it doesn't take time. You can't wound me. <laughs> Try your worst. I know where I'm going. Hallelujah. I'm so focused on where I'm going that I see your own comment as a distraction. Yes. That's where I'm going. I said, Covenant University and Landmark University listed in the first Ten leading universities in Nigeria. The landmark of yesterday. You better leave Omoras on their own and face where you are going. Now, the good news is this. Before the day runs out, as you clear off all offenses in your heart, offense against God, against man, against your spouse, against your children, offenses against your neighbor, against your boss, against your subordinate, against your colleagues. As you clear these offenses, God will clear the remaining barriers on your part of your prophecy.
give the Lord a big hand of prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come and give Jesus the biggest clap offering of the year. This is the last Sunday service of the year and the last day of the year. Give Jesus a rousing ovation. Rise to your feet. Come on, give him a jump of praise. Come on, give him a jump of praise. It's your turn to celebrate. It's your turn to celebrate. It's your turn to celebrate. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Help me congratulate your neighbors to your right and to your left. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. Now, get seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Very quickly right now, you are in this service and you are not born again yet, but an opportunity in this last Sunday and last day of the year to step out of darkness and come into light, to step out of struggles and come into the realm of miracles, to step out of suffering and become an envy of your world. That's what Jesus does. He comes to give us life and life in his perfect form. Wherever you are, you want your sins forgiven. You want to become a child of God this morning. I'd like to pray with you. Now, would you please stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. Everyone that wants to surrender his or her life to Jesus, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You want to surrender your life to Jesus, stand to your feet. And God bless you wherever you are. I'm praying for you right there. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. You want to surrender your life to Christ, stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there and you'll be born again. Somebody else needs to get up. Wherever you are, get up right now. Make your choice. You have the right to make your choice. You have the God-given right to make your choice. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Some church officials will be there to assist you in filling out your card. And then I'll be praying with you subsequently. Now, there are also people here that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. And free themselves from all alternatives. That disqualifies them for access to God's blessings. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to settle with God so he can settle the issues of your life. I met Jesus 48 years ago. I have not tried any other source, human or idol. No other source. If Jesus can't do it, leave it there. Leave it there. God will always pay full attention to the focused individuals who have no alternatives. So wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Stand to your feet. Amen. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus? You want to be free from offenses against God? want to settle him back with God. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet wherever you are. Stand to your feet. You want to resettle your life with God. Stand to your feet. Amen. Some more need to get up. Please, wherever you are, get up. Get up. I'd like to pray with you right now. Get up. I'll pray with you right now. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus and be focused on him and have all your expectations from him. Stand to your feet. Now, everyone standing, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. I pray for you at the same time. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. The officials are beckoning to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody excited today. Now, there's a way you will give thanks to God between now and the cross overnight that surprises will land for you. So cancel all unproductive appointments. You don't need none today. Keep a genuine appointment with God. Get serious with God. Get serious with God if you will. Seriously hearken to the words of the Lord your God and seriously observe to do what he tells you to do. The Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. So, seriously give him thanks today on issues that even don't appear thanksworthy. 
give him thanks. Amen. What is in thanking God for somebody who is thinking? Give him thanks. It's the only way this tent will be over. Give him thanks. It's the only way you come out of the grave. Give him thanks. So I'd like you to keep a serious appointment with God. Some are perhaps here to settle in till night. If it's your choice. And just settle in properly. Settle in properly. Anybody can accuse me of being too serious with God. I've been too serious with God all my life. It takes a serious approach to experience a glorious result. When a child is not doing anything, get serious. Get serious. When a Christian is not making marks, get serious. He's not saying anything that others are saying. Get serious. Get serious. Get serious. Thank you, Jesus. Keep appointment with God for the few hours remaining today. All this pattern on the bar, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You don't need that. Get serious. All of us who are standing, please bow your heads for prayers and lift up your right hand to heaven. Now, and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your precious blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve you the remaining days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. And thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. Amen and amen. Keep your hands up. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I cover each one of you with the precious blood of the Lamb. Remain covered against all the wickedness of the wicked. You shall run this race to the end. You shall live a triumphant life. Your life will soon be turned to an envy among your mockers. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Congratulations, congratulations. Please make sure you submit your cards to the official standing with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now it's time to step into our Thanksgiving session. Bring up your Thanksgiving seat right now. We are thanking God for all of his goodness and mercy since the year began. January came and went. February, March, and then jump. June, July, August, September, October, November. And now, the last day of the year, God has been good to you. Has God been good to you? How many of you have ever traveled since the year began? Within the city? Outside the city? Let me see your hands up. Now, even coming to church here is a journey. Glory to God. So, you travel every week. Every week. Some of you travel to your own provincial center. There is movement. To walk, there is movement. There is almost no day of this year you have not been in a vehicle. How did you arrive? How did you arrive at your destination? Many have never slept in hospital throughout this year. <laughs> Many are on no medication. Many have not missed work one day. Many here don't even have hospital card. Now, wait a minute. You owe God thanks. I owe God thanks. He's always waiting to receive our thanks in return for his good hand on our life. And we are giving it to him this morning. Would you stand to your feet? Amen.
How many know that God is never in need? How many know that no matter what we give, it doesn't add anything to God? Because there is nothing, there is nowhere to add anything to him. He already feels all in all. Every of our seed is to add more of his blessings to our lives. Psalm 96, verse 7 and 8. Give glory, give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Now, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his call. We do that every month and we do that the end of every year. Lift up your seat right now. Lift up your thanksgiving seat. And with your own mouth, give God thanks. You are where you are by his grace. And where I am by his grace. Now give him thanks. Give him thanks. Do it seriously. Do it with serious mindedness. I thank you, Jesus. For what you have turned out of my life in the course of the year. I celebrate you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Lift those seeds up. Now, Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. To see the last day of this year will return all the glory to you. It is your doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Thank you and thank you and thank you forever. Now receive our thanksgiving seed today and let it return supernaturally multiplied in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now get seated. The choir will be leading us. And celebration praise as soon as you cast your seed you get up on your feet and start celebrating your God with us Jesus is Lord Amen
my soul.
and shout the loudest hallelujah. May the celebration of today last you your remaining days in life. Every month of the coming year shall be worth much more than the whole year today. As you keep praising him, he won't stop lifting you. And may the balance of your package for the year that is yet to be released be released at the instance of this intense thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. No carryover. We serve a God of set time. Whatever has been ordered for 2017 shall be fully realized in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone testified in the first service today that he heard me say, Come with God today. It was 31st of um, December last year, and they were here this morning with a set of twins. <laughs> now, you come with God with intense thanksgiving in all things and for all things and you will return December 31st, 2018 with your proofs. <laughs> Tonight, among others, we have a special blood of sprinkling ministration <laughs> across all of our churches worldwide because at the instance of the mission of Israel sprinkling, Israel came out of captivity and straight into their promised land. They fed supernaturally for 40 years, had their health care fully insured, kept by the power of God until they arrived at their promised land. At the instance of the blood of sprinkling tonight, uh, down tomorrow morning, you'll be ushered into your dream land. Yeah. And it shall be a new dawn indeed for everyone. Yeah. That is your portion. Yeah. Therefore, come with God and cancel all unproductive appointments and keep an appointment with God for the few hours remaining. We have just about 10 hours more to the crossover service program. We have it transmitted tonight to all of our Shiloh transmission centers, provincial centers, and all the other ones that we have. Please endeavor to be part of it. That was brought closest to everybody so that nursing mothers can be part of it, aged people can be part of it, and then you return with proofs to show in the name of Jesus. All the ones who have traveled and are back, we thank God for answered prayers. The ones who are on their way coming, they will arrive safely. There shall be no one single negative report. And so for those who are outside, wherever you are, just get down to the church. It's the same service. We're having it all transmission from here and you will be more than blessed. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. You made it at last. Congratulations. Amen. You've seen the last day of the year. Congratulations. Amen. You have seen the beginning of the new year tomorrow morning. Congratulations. Amen. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks.